Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about simple machines. Before we talk about simple machines, however, we should define what a machine is. A machine is any device that uses energy to do work. One of my favorite machines is the bicycle. It allows me to move around town very quickly when there's not too much snow on the ground. Now that we've defined a machine as anything that can use energy to do work, we should probably define what work is. Work is in science defined as a force exerted over a distance. And let's, so, I, so let's say I lift an apple. An apple has a weight of one newton and I lift it one meter. Well then the work is the force times the distance or one newton times one meter or one joule of work is done. And I could use a simple machine to do such a task. Um, so if we look at the bicycle again, that machine, and we tear it down to, into its individual parts, what we'll find is that this complex machine is actually made up of much simpler parts. And if we pare that down to the simplest of simple parts, we call those simple machines. And there's some debate on what actually makes up a simple machine. The, the general list of six simple machines kind of grew right out of the Renaissance and, and the work of uh, da Vinci on some of his earliest drawings of machines. And so in general, they're defined as the lever, the wheel and axle, the pulley, the inclined plane, the wedge, and the screw. And a definition for what a simple machine is, is any mechanical device that changes the direction or the magnitude of a force. Now you'll find that some of the things were left off that list that you might think of as simple machines. A gear is simply a detailed example of a wheel and axle. And hydraulics is interesting. Hydraulics allows us to magnify our forces, and so we maybe should include that in our list of simple machines. Now the more in detail you look at simple machines, what you'll find is that all simple machines are actually one of two different types. They are either a lever, and a wheel and axle and pulley are examples of a lever, or they are an inclined plane. And a wedge is simply two inclined planes, and a screw is an inclined plane wrapped about a cylinder. And so the easiest way to look at simple machines is to look at these two types. And so first, let's talk about the lever. Uh, you've learned about levers probably your whole life. The parts of a lever are going to be the arm and then the fulcrum. And so there's an old quote that says, if I had a lever long enough and a place to rest it, I could lift the world. And so let's look at that lever. On one side, you have the world or the earth, and on the other side, you have you. The fulcrum then sits right in the middle. And so you input a force on one side of the lever. We call that the input force, or F sub I, and you get an output force on the other side, and that's called F sub O. Uh, or output force. And so we can look at any kind of a lever and we can measure how well it does at magnifying your input force. And we call that mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage is defined as the ratio between the output force and the input force. And so when you push down on one side of a lever, for example, with an input force of 2, and you're able to magnify that and get an output force of 10, that would be a mechanical advantage of 10 divided by 2, or 5. Now, you probably know that in science you don't get anything for free. And so what's the magic of a simple machine? Well, there's not really any magic at all. Remember we defined work as force times the distance, and so if you look at a lever, you may be implying a less force, let's say a 2 newton force, but you have to apply that over a greater distance. And so on the other side, on the output side, you may get a greater force, but you're going to only get that over a less distance. And so our mechanical advantage can be greater than one if we're ever magnifying our force, or it can be less than one if we're trying to increase our distance. So your arm, for example, has a mechanical advantage much less than one. What does that allow you to do? It's, it allows you to have a greater length of mobility. The other type of simple machine is the inclined plane. And so uh, inclined plane allows us to talk about a term called efficiency. So let's say that we're lifting a 2 newton force, or a 2 newton weight, and we want to lift that 1 meter. But it's too heavy for us to lift, and so instead of doing that, we use an inclined plane. Let's say using an inclined plane, instead of applying a 2 newton force, we're able to apply a force of 0.2 newtons. The problem with an inclined plane is that we have to actually drag it a greater distance. Let's say we have to drag that 12 meters instead of 1 meter. Well, we don't have to pull as hard, and that's the reason that uh, going upstairs is easier than climbing up a ladder. 
but we're actually putting more work in and we're losing that some of that energy to the friction of the inclined plane itself and so there's when you say that uh, a simple machine allows you to do more work it's probably not true um, what you're doing is you're actually doing more work by doing a, adding a simple machine, but you're able to change the direction or the magnitude of the force. And so we use a term called efficiency. Efficiency is when the input work and the output work are identical, and 100% efficient simple machine simply does not exist. We usually have to put way more work into a machine than we're able to get out of it. And so that's simple machines, and I hope that's helpful.